A 14-year-old girl with cancer has had her final wish granted. She's gonna get cryogenically frozen. This was a real big legal battle in the UK because the girl's father was against the procedure, but the girl's mother was all for it. The judge, after visiting with the girl, said that he was moved by the valiant way she was facing her predicament. He ended up ruling not that the girl would be frozen, but that the girl's mother had the right to decide what to do with her body over the father. That means that while he didn't directly endorse chronic preservation, previously just wanting to have your child frozen could be caused to take away custody from a parent. Now, if you notice, we said the judge ruled who would get to decide what to do with the girl's body, as in her remains. That's because in order to be frozen, the girl had to be legally declared dead first. Scientists still don't know how to replace consciousness in a person. The spark that makes us who we are and tells us to think and be alive, we don't get that yet. So I couldn't imagine how they'd return that to her after she died. Alcor, the top cryonics company in the world, had a specific answer for this. In the ideal situation, the company intervenes in the dying process to preserve the brain as well as possible. So if you think about it, Alcor reminds us, a hundred years ago, you couldn't come back from a bad heart attack. Now, it's not that uncommon to hear of someone coming back from the dead, being brought back up to 10 minutes after their heart has stopped beating. Yeah, so the trick here is declaring legal death as early as possible and then starting the freezing process right after, but ideally within a window that maybe our current doctors wouldn't be able to bring someone back from, but that they truly believe future doctors and scientists would have no issue doing. If you don't buy that, we present to you the case of Anna. Anna <laughs> was a skier who got trapped under a layer of ice for 80 minutes. 40 minutes in, her blood flow stopped and she died of circulatory arrest. It wasn't until another 40 minutes later that they were able to get her out. So they performed CPR for over over an hour and they used a special machine to warm up her blood and pump it back into her and she came back to life and now she's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, so I had to get some very specific questions answered. First off, easy one, how much does this cost? Well, in the case of the 14-year-old UK girl, it cost just under $46,000, an amount that her grandparents were actually able to raise for her with the help of a bunch of cryogenics enthusiasts. Okay, so honestly, in the grand scheme of this is your life, that's not that much money. So I could be down for that. But next, I was like, hey, I've heard that freezing causes irreversible damage to cellular material. But <laughs> Alcor had an answer for that too. Yeah, apparently the cryonics process has come a long way. So before 1992, if you got frozen, yeah, they just kind of tossed you in some liquid nitrogen and threw you behind the ice bags at 7-Eleven. But the technology has advanced like crazy every few years. And now they actually remove the water from your body that causes the damage because when it freezes, it crystallizes, making it like glass in all your brain cells. They now replace the water with a chemical that does not crystallize. And now let's take a look side by side at brain cells frozen in the old way and in the new way. You can see there's virtually no damage to the brain with even the individual neurons remaining intact. Yeah, and even if there was a little damage, it's vascular, meaning it's affecting the blood vessels, and we already have that kind of technology to make repairs to small capillaries and whatnot. So Alcor suggests that it'd be super easy to make these repairs in the future. So now I'm starting to get pretty pumped, but then I started thinking, we're relying a lot on these scientists in the future. But who the hell are they? Like, are there scientists out there right now learning how to thaw people? Because that's something that they gotta work on and mess up a bunch of times before I want them to try and thaw me. Yeah, and that's fair. And there's not as positive news here about that. This topic is still a little taboo, and while this court case is a good sign, mainstream science isn't really doubling down on cryonics. Not yet, at least. Right, but there are also some legal issues depending on where you live, and you have to get creative to work around them. Like, for instance, if you die in some way that requires an autopsy post-mortem, which is really common in a lot of states, you can't let them do that because they take out the brain and they poke at it, and that's not good for you. So in that case, they actually recommend you go through the legal loophole of signing a do not autopsy based on religious objections so that you don't get your brain messed with. Ultimately, cryonics has been called an ambulance to the future. Ooh. And while I would love to get to the future in a much cooler way, I guess this is probably the most realistic and the coolest way I could. As for me, I'd rather download my consciousness into a computer. Oh, hell yes. But science has a bunch of ideas for what humanity can do about that. Check out the show dedicated to the idea of when we left Earth on Discovery Go. You can check out the link down below, download the app for free. I'm gonna go watch it right now. What if I did do that and I was frozen in LA and then woke up in like a futuristic space station? Oh, and then they study you as being the last of your kind. Yeah. <laughs> or they give you a, a job like Fry and you're an your aircraft <laughs> right. delivery man. Comment on if you would want to be frozen. Bye-bye. Bye. With time travel, there's always the possibility of a paradox or a contradiction in the timeline. At least some scientists feel that way. Draw a bear in under 20 seconds? Okay, we'll go for it. Okay. I see bench or line or toothbrush. <laughs>